Hello, welcome to my channel. In the last video, we saw how we could receive messages. So we are still looking at our Azure key bus. We saw how we could receive messages. We saw how we could receive multiple messages. And I mentioned that we have two modes when it comes to receiving messages. We can receive and delete, and we can also, um, we can um, receive and delete, and we can also pick and lock. So this video is, um about um pick and lock let me share my screen let me share my visual studio before i explain further yeah so i believe you can see my visual studio now um so i explained that um so i think i should probably share my uh my agile console so that it will be clear before we come to visual studio yeah so if you can remember the analogy that i gave i said when we are working with queues let's think about a restaurant and we have a restaurant several persons they want to um purchase food and they are on a queue and the first person to be on the queue is probably the first to be answered, first in, first out. That's the standard procedure. Um, so what this video is all up about is that, you know, I said that when we are um, working with the receive operation, that's the, the queue operation, it works in the receive mode of receive and delete. So after, a customer have been answered from the queue in the restaurant, that customer will be deleted from the queue. The customer will like go out, carry his food and step out. So it's a single operation. However, I said that when we are looking at peak, we are only trying to look at the message. We are looking at the content. We are just trying to see, um, what is available and things like that. So under um, this picking, there is a concept that I want us to see. And let me go to my overview. And it's called um, message lock duration, which you can see here. By default, it's set to one minute, I believe. Um, but I've reduced mine to 50 seconds. It doesn't really matter. So what this is essentially saying is that because the peak operation is not um, a, a straightforward operation like the receive mode, that after answering a customer, after addressing an item on the queue, it's deleted as part of the operation, there needs to be a time lap because when a customer is being answered or when um, a message is triggered or something, it should not, there should be a time lap that it should take be, before that message will be completed. So if let's say I pick a message and within this 50 seconds, let's say after 10 seconds, I send another receive request to pick again, it's not going to pick the message I was um, speaking about initially. So this might sound strange, but let me just go over to my, so that it, it will be clear. Let me go to my service boss explorer. But just take note of the timing that I showed you 50 seconds. Um, let this open. Pick from start. We have just two messages here. Take note of that. And what we have is third message and fourth message. So let me add fifth message and I will also add sixth message. So I'll come over to um send message. I'll call this fifth message. And I will send. And I also want sixth message. Okay, let me refresh to be sure. Okay, it's already added. I didn't pick from start. Let me pick from start. And we have fifth message. 
So let me add sist message as well. Sist message. Yeah, so we have third, we have fourth, we have fifth, and we have sixth. We have four messages in this queue. So now let us work with our pick now. I'm on pick mode. And um, what I will do is I will pick the next message. We call that, so let me allow us see it first. We call that we have third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And based on first in, first out, if I want to pick one message, the message that will be picked should be the third message. So now, um, so ideally it should be the third message and pick operation does not delete. So let's receive message, um, receive mode. So re re remember it was four messages. So let's receive messages now. So we are not receiving and deleting. We are picking, we are picking just one. Um, so let's, uh, um, I will still explain this. Hopefully I get the time to explain it later on. This is just um, saying that when um, a message is in, is still within, um, it's in lock mode. How long should we wait before going for the next message? So let me just work with this first. So pick lock. So let's receive. So we'll get the third message. So you can see the third message. So let me now do another receive again very quickly. Under the, um, I will receive next message again before 50 seconds. Receive another one again, pick lock. Um, and you can see um, it's the fourth message this time. If I could try it again before 50 seconds is over, it will be the fifth message. So except the one for the third message has already been exhausted. That the time has already been exhausted. So, and the maximum time that it will wait has also been exhausted. So that is what this um, lock mode is all about. So the reason why the fourth message was what um, was um captured here is because the third message was in lock mode third message was in lock mode so that's why it comes to the fourth message by now um the messages would have left lock mode i believe 50 seconds have should have been exhausted since i did the third message so if i should try it again um Let's see if we'll see the third message now. So we are seeing the fifth message now. So let me try it again. And we'll probably see the sixth message. Um, and that is where the maximum time that um, this 10 milliseconds um, that was set comes into play. So let's do it again. See the sixth message. Yeah, so now it is finished. So let's see. Um, let's receive a message again. Oh, pick, pick next message. Yeah, you can see no additional message now. No additional messages were picked. And now it is in waiting period. It is in waiting period. So th this is where the maximum, um, the time that was set comes into play. If I could check out 10,000 milliseconds, 10,000 milliseconds to seconds let's see how long this is so it's 10 seconds so it will wait for 10 seconds um let's see again no additional message let's pick from start so we still have these three messages here um let me refresh 
Okay. So let me add a new message. Let me add um, um seventh message. Yeah, seventh message. And what I would do now is I'll change the so now we are picking next message. Oh, not pick. I should be doing receive. Sorry. Uh, so receive messages. So I still choose pick and lock. Um, yeah, this was what I wanted to do. Sorry. So now, um, let me try to receive now. I will get our seventh message. So let me try to um, receive again. Let's try to receive again. So it will wait for 10 seconds. before telling us no additional messages. Okay, so I hope um, this is clear when it comes to, so I just wanted to illustrate um, what the, what this, um, where is it? This message log duration is. So this message log duration is simply looking at um, when you've picked a particular message and the time it will take before you are able to pick another message, before you are able to pick it again. So that's what this message lock duration is, sim is simply talking about. And um, the timing here has been set to 10 seconds, to 50 seconds. So that's basically it. That'd be what it's talking about. So if I should wait a little more time, I'll be able to pick more. I'll be able to receive more um, the messages that was earlier received. So before I go to my Explorer, I would actually like to, before I will, I will go to um, Visual Studio, I would want to receive at least one of the messages that um that we added just to allow us see yeah so now you can see that the delivery count it's it has increased to one now so it means that the 50 seconds have been exhausted if i should do it now i believe i should be able to receive my messages now so it's all because the 50 seconds was not exhausted initially now let me do it and you see that I'll be able to do it. Still pick lock. So let's receive. Yeah, and you can see we are back to third message. And the delivery count is one. So if I should refresh this, you see that the delivery count will be increased to two. That will be after 50 seconds. So if I should go over here, the delivery count can still be one. But after 50 seconds, it will increase to two for the third message. And the reason why I it's waited a while is because my the maximum time was um was um uh, what's it called it was um ten thousand milliseconds. So th that ten thousand milliseconds was added to the 50 seconds. That was that was why we needed to wait for about um 60 seconds before we can reuse any of these messages so i believe the logic is clear i believe the logic is clear so just think of a restaurant so you are responding to one customer you do not want another customer to be making a request at the same time you, because you can only speak to one at a time um, so you kind of like lock 
access to other customer while responding to one customer. So the good thing about this peak operation is that you are at liberty to determine the time, the amount of time you want to use. So you know the amount of operation that you need to perform and you um, can determine if you want it to be like two minutes, you want it to be like 10 seconds, five seconds and the likes compared to the receive and delete that will just work in a single operation. So you can um, easily track what is going on here. But that is not even what this video is all about. What this video is about is to allow you to know how you can make your peak operation function like a receive and delete. So after, if you if you can notice, after we've picked um, messages from our queue, um, after the time is elapsed, the messages reappear over here. But there is a method, there's a function that you can use to kind of like delete the message after you've picked who it and after some time. So that is what we are looking at. So I will be sharing my, just, I want you to take note that we have our third message, we have fourth, fifth, six, seven. So I, um, before I go to my Visual Studio now, let's just confirm that our delivery count for the third message will go to two. So let me refresh, take note of the delivery count. Let's see if it will be two now, because I think 50 seconds have been elapsed, I'm not sure. Okay, still one. So 50 seconds um, hasn't been fully elapsed. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Yeah, so it's still on one. So it's probably still on lock mode and it will still get to, um, it will still become active, fully active again. So what I will do now is, um. I would go over to my Visual Studio. I'll see check out this. Let me go to my Visual Studio. Um, and if you notice, I call this project pick to delete. And you know that when we are picking, you usually it is lock, but now we are pick to delete. And it's because we are also performing something that is similar to um, the delete operation. So, and that is where this line comes in handy. So we are completing the message async, this method. So we use this to receive the message and we are now adding a new function to complete it. And um, take note that your receive mode must be set to pick lock before making use of this method. Um, so we have this here. So what this will do, what this program does, this is similar to the previous program that we worked with. The only thing that is different is this line. So I do not need to explain everything again. So when I run this program, it would go to this queue, this restaurant queue, then it would pick just a single message. So the um, the next message that is available to be picked that isn't in a lock mode, um, it will pick that message. Then after displaying that message over here, then it will also complete the message. So you wouldn't see the message in your queue anymore. So that's basically what we are doing. So it would act like, um, like we were changing the receive mode to receive and delete but it's actually pick and pick lock so and the usefulness of this as i said is that instead of using a single operation to receive and delete and um because that's a single operation and you probably have a lot of processes that are working and you do not want to complete the message um immediately you want it to delay for some time although there are several functions that you can also use um with receive and delete as well uh, but pick lock is 
has this function that helps you to do that as well. So I'll be running this program now. So I'll be running this program. So let me stop sharing before I run so that I'll share the output screen. Before I run it, let me just refresh these to see that my count I've got into two. Um, yeah, and it has. So this was what I wanted to show you. So the counters, the delivery count I've got into two over here. So it was formerly one. So that's because um two min one minute has elapsed or going to two minutes now. That's probably why. So let me stop sharing and I would share my out. I will run the program and I'll share the output screen so that I can see it. And I believe it should be the third message that we would see because the third message is available. Yeah, so we can see the third message now. So what I will do now is we are going to go over to um to the Azure portal and we'll see if we can still see this third message. You know that normally for peak operation, it it, it does not delete the um okay so yeah so we you know you know that usually for the peak operation even if you are using peak lock just peak lock alone it will only make the message not to be um accessible within the message lock time frame but you it it will still be displayed over here. But now because of the function, because we are completing the message, uh, we want to take it out. So take note of this counter. We have five messages here. So now I'll be refreshing and we'll see if we can still see this third message. So let me refresh. And now you can see it has reduced to four. If I should pick from start. The third message is no longer here. You can see the third message is no longer here. So now, just for us to see that this is truly having an effect, let me go back and I will comment out that line. So let me um, go over, share my Visual Studio again. And let me take away this line. I will save and I will run it one more time. Um, I will run it. Let me stop sharing before running. Okay, I can run it. And I will share my output screen. Should be the fourth message. Yeah, because the third message is already out. So we have the fourth message here. Um, then what I will do now is, let me stop sharing. Um, then I would go over to my portal. So you, you can see that it was the fourth message that was picked. And I'll go over to my portal. This is the fourth message. Um, I will refresh now and we'll see if we can still see the fourth message. You know that we did not complete the message. That function that, uh, that removes the message from the queue is no longer active. It has been commented out. So we can still see the fourth message over here. Even though it's in lock mode, it's in lock mode, but yet we can still see the fourth message. It's not going to be deleted. So I believe we understand the logic now. So it's still in lock mode. Still in lock mode. It has increased to two. So it's out of lock mode already. And you can see the fourth message is still here. So basically, um, that's what this is all about. I hope this makes sense. I hope this is clear. So this is about 
message lock, trying to understand um, the usefulness of message lock as well as um, completing a message. And I've tried to explain it as clear as possible um, using the very simple code that we have. Um, so don't hesitate to like, share, and subscribe if you find this video useful. Um, in our next video, we'll be looking at another concept, time to life, time to live, and we'll see how it can be used with cues. Have a nice day, everyone.